Well, hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to First Baptist West Facebook Live. And we're coming to you live from the offices of First Baptist West. And again, especially from Elizabeth's desk. We always want to thank her for allowing us to film her desk. And of course, she always throws in some Texas stuff. And it's hidden today. But you see behind me, we do have some big OU things going on. Uh, we got a fun program for you tonight. We're going to do some different things that we have done in the past. Uh, but we're real excited about some uh, some of the prospects that we have going. Tonight, our special guests are our senior spotlight is going to be Miracle Charity. And she's here with us, and we're going to be talking to her here in just a little bit. And also joining us a little later in the program is uh, Ed and Jean Peterson. They've come on, and uh, they've graciously approved to come and uh, visit with us tonight. And we're really excited about things happening. Well, things are loosening up just a little bit, and real excited. I want you to let Noah know that I'm, I'm kind of sore today. We actually uh, opened up the gym, and I got to go back into the gym for the first time in a while and a little bit sore from it. And it made me start thinking about something that I've thought about in the past. You know, there's a lot of people who have uh, gym memberships, and a lot of times they just they pay the membership and they don't go. Well, I have offered many times, and I'm going to offer it again tonight, just very quickly for a brief time only, that you can join uh, my workout plan since you never go to the gym anyway, I've got a special offer for you. It, what you'll do is if you'll cancel your gym membership, which you pay every month and you don't go anyway, and what I want you to do is you send your gym membership the same amount of money to me. And if you give it to me, I will hold on to it. And then guess what? You don't go to the gym anyway. I won't require you. I won't call you. I won't ask you. And you say, well, now what's the deal? Well, the deal is at the end of the year, I'll turn around and give you half of it back. Not too bad, huh? Since you don't go to the gym anyway, I'll bet you Planet Fitness, the Y, no one else will do that for you. They could, will take all of your money. So just for a limited time tonight, for all of you that are watching, and we got quite a few watching. Yeah, Shelly and all of you. If you've got a gym membership and you don't go, cancel it, send it to me. Come December, at the end of December, I'll give it back to you, all right? How about that? I made me think about that while I was at the gym uh, yesterday and how many people probably weren't showing up uh, for their, uh, to use their gym membership anyway. So anyway, just I wanted to share that with you, just a quick thought. Uh, as we do every week, we want to start off uh, our program uh, with three things that you should know. So John, let's roll it. All right, and the first thing that we that you should know about First Baptist West is our M28 Ministries. Now, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all the work that you're putting in uh, to helping feed the people of Lawton that are there in need. And this week, uh, yesterday, our group fed, we sent out 281 meals uh, for the, the people of Lawton. And I want to say again, thank you for everyone that, that uh, is providing food, also for those who are going and helping serve. Remember, as I shared with you last week, beginning a ministry is the easy part. The hard part is continuing on. Now, folks, we're going to have to continue this for some time. So I, I want you to continue to pray about uh, your part in this to help us with the food. Uh, we're still needing every week. We need vegetables. Uh, we, need, uh, we need bread. We need desserts, little small packets of, of little uh, prepackaged 
uh, desserts are fine or if you want to make homemade desserts, uh, anything that you could possibly make, uh, please donate that to us and be a part of that. Also, if you would like to help go serve, man, we're, we're all excited about that. And Jean Peterson is setting that up. So if you'll contact the church, we'll get you in touch with her so that you can go and help us uh, serve uh, while, while we're doing this. Now, I do want to mention with one thing about this, though. Monday is Memorial Day and the offices are going to be closed. So Susan and them have asked me if we could, if you are willing to help with the vegetables, desserts, or the breads, if you could bring that uh, tomorrow, uh, the offices will be open all day. But then on Friday, if you could bring it, then the offices will be open till noon. So you'll need to get them here by noon. And then of course, it will be closed on Monday. And so if you're going to wait till Tuesday morning, you really need to come early Tuesday morning with the, any supplies that you're going to help us with, okay? So please keep that in mind, uh, but we will be here tomorrow all day, Friday till noon, and then early on Tuesday. But again, church, thank you so much for helping and doing what you're doing, and this is a great ministry, and people are really needing uh, your service uh, right now here in Lawton, so thank you. Number two, I mentioned to you last week about a, an exciting, fun time that we always have at First Baptist West every Memorial Day weekend. We have our family kite day, and we've done that for the last couple of years. Uh, we have a, a time of uh, service here at the church, and then we have usually a lunch. And then we go out and we play games and do different things, and we fly kites and just have a great time. Well, because of, of the restrictions, we're not going to be able to do that this year, but we are going to uh, still want you to observe the family kite day. Uh, what we ask you to do is, if you will, go out and this weekend, Memorial Day weekend, get with your family, have a great time, and spend some time flying a kite. And if you will, take pictures of that. And if you will send that with uh, the hashtag First Baptist West Ki Family Kite Day on, and label that on your, uh, on your post, then that way we can go to it and we want to celebrate with you. As a matter of fact, Carrie and I are going to start tomorrow, right? Yep. Tomorrow. Carrie and I are going to start tomorrow. We've got a lot of kites, and we're going to try to hit up all the kids of our church and uh, try to get you to have a kite. And now, remind you that the kites are going to be blank. They're, they're just plain white. But what we're wanting you to do is we want you to draw on your kite, design your own kite, and then take pictures of it and post those as well with the same hashtag on it. And so we'll have a little bit more about that later on in our program at the end uh, so you can do that. Number three, and this is what I'm really excited about. And man, can you feel it? We are just one more week away from all of us being able to gather together here at First Baptist West for our worship service. Worship service. So on uh, May 31st, we're going to be joining together again at First Baptist West for, for our live worship services. Now, a couple things that I want to mention about that. The first of all is that we're going to have two services to help accommodate how many, many people may want to come. Now, something that we're going to do differently is our first service usually on Sunday mornings are going to be at 8 o'clock. Well, we're making a change for this time period that our services are not going to start until 8.30. So instead of 8 o'clock service, we'll have an 8.30 service. And what that's going to do is that's not going to create such a big gap in between the two services for everyone here uh, that's, that's doing the services. So uh, that will still give you time to do your, your Sunday school classes. That will give you time to get to where you need to be going. Uh, but we're going to do an 8.30 service. Now, the second service will still be at 10.45. So uh, we're, we're going to do that. That'll be live stream. Everything will, will be going the same as we've always done there. But we, we things will be go, going to be looking a little differently, though. We're not just going to be able to gather together, sit anywhere you want to sit, go where you want to go. We're going to have to be uh, observing some social distancing. And so there's going to be some things that we're going to have to do differently, like coming into the church, finding your seats. You're going to not be able to just walk in. We're going to have people along the way that are going to be helping you. Well, as a matter of fact, what we have is we have a, uh, I, I brought some kids up the other day and we're going to, we had a short video that we want to show, kind of an instructional video. So if you'll hold on just a second, I want to show you that of kind of maybe what it's going to look like uh, on our first Sunday back. So John, let's go ahead and show that video. Family arrived First Baptist West, you'll be welcomed by a host of greeters who are really excited to have you back in church so that we can all worship together again. And hand sanitizer will be placed throughout the building to keep your hands very clean.
and as you arrive to the worship center, another greeter will present you to an usher. You'll be warmly welcomed, and remember, there is the new First Baptist West and Shake. An usher will then assist you to your seat to help you find the appropriate place. And remember, it may not be the seat that you normally sit in every Sunday. And of course, social distancing will be observed. And after a great time of worship, you and your family will be on your way home, looking forward to our next time together. And so you see, things will be a little bit differently. I, I want to say a quick thank you to uh, the kids that came and helped, helped us film that, and for Randy and others who uh, had a big part in that. But as you just see, it's just a lighthearted way to let you know that, again, things are going to be a little different for you on Sunday mornings when you come to the worship service. Uh, what, what we're going to have, though, is a letter of a description will be placed on our Facebook page, our web page, even our Instagram. So follow us on Instagram and even Twitter. Did y'all know we even had a Twitter? Yeah. I, 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 I knew that just a while ago. But we do have a Twitter account, so follow us on Twitter. You'll be able to even uh, see things on there. But we're going to list a, 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 of events and things that are going to be happening and how we're going to be doing things uh, we, we are not going to have a uh, nursery and preschool or children's things for the first couple of weeks. Then we're going to gradually move into that. Uh, but we will be starting our preschool and uh, a nursery in just a couple of weeks after that. So keep in mind all those things. Now, last thing on that is we really do need some help. As you saw, uh, the kids did a great job pretending to be ushers, but we're really going to need ushers and greeters. So if you would help us with that, please contact us here at the church. And if you filled out uh, an ushers and greeters uh, card some months ago, uh, we will be using you. And so we're going to be working this weekend uh, to get some things together. We'll be having a meeting that we'll issue out to all of you uh, the, the Saturday prior to that Sunday. So be in prayer about everything. I'm excited about everything that's going on. God is good. He's done some great work. And we're, we're really just uh, honored to get to be serving him. So those are the three things that you should know about First Baptist West. Well, our next thing that we're going to do is we have our first senior spotlight is up first tonight, and Miracle Charity is, is here. But before she does it, we're actually going to have a commercial. Uh, the commercial is uh, the first one we've had on, on our time here, but it's not one of those commercials where we get money for it, but it's dealing with our Sunday school. So uh, we'll be back after this commercial break. So we're back from our first commercial, and that's our only commercial, and probably will be the only commercial we ever have. I want to take a minute and just uh, welcome everybody again that's watching. Man, we got uh, Will is here, Doug is here, Shelly. Your Aunt Shelly is here, so she's <laughs> watching us. Gina, uh, Marie, uh, Paula, Susan, Larry, just a lot of people. So a lot of people tuned in to see you tonight, Miracle. So I want to introduce you, our, our next senior. This is our third senior for uh, the Senior Spotlight. And this is one of my favorite people in the world. This is Miracle Charity. Miracle, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Man, I, I thank you for coming and being here tonight. Thank you for having me. I hope you're not me. too nervous. Nope. Okay, good. You don't seem nervous. As a matter of fact, I think <laughs> I'm more nervous than you are. But uh, it's really good to have you. So how are you doing? I've been doing good. Everything all right around the house? What's it been like not being in school? Um, it's been pretty crazy, actually. It's really weird knowing that I also don't have to go back next year. But then again, it's 
very stress relieving knowing that I don't have to. So. Well, that was my, that was my next question was how are things knowing that whew, school's over? I'm I'm glad school's over. I'm not very um, glad that we didn't get to finish out the year how I wanted to, but it was it was exceptional. Good. Now, as a matter of fact, isn't this the week that you were supposed to actually have graduation, right? Tomorrow and Friday? Um, our graduation, yes, was actually supposed to be the 22nd. Uh-huh. Um, it's still going to be the same date. It's still going to be, like, on live and stuff. But Right. Yeah. But but you're not going to get to... Are you going to get to do any walking um, or anything like that? Or how are they going to do that? Um, we are supposed to have a physical graduation sometime in June. Okay. It's not set in stone yet, so... Um, we first did the uh, one online to where they just recorded us moving our tassels. Mm -hmm. So you get to see that. So. Okay. All right. So the, the year kind of ended quickly. I mean, you weren't we weren't even expecting it to, to go like that, right? I mean, it wasn't like they were any warning. They just said, okay, hey, we're not – after spring break, you kind of – that was it. Spring break was your last time in school, right? Yes. Right. So, first of all, where do you where did you where are you going to graduate from? Eisenhower uh, High School. Eisenhower. I did, and I knew that. I just wanted everybody to hear you. Say, <laughs> but it is Eisenhower. Uh, so, school came to an abrupt end. What were your thoughts as you began to look and think of you know some of the things that you weren't going to get to do for your senior year? Um. Well, at first I felt well sad because you know we miss out on prom and miss out on more memories we get to make in the in like the ends of our senior years but it came to like I came to a realization that it all everything happens for a reason so mm -hmm. it'll all be okay okay so you you're you're seeming to settle down from all that and think yeah. everything's going to be good okay so how how's your family doing I, I know you're not an only child let everybody know kind of about your family um we're doing pretty good uh Man, I wish Xander was back in school, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, so it's probably your mom, huh? <laughs> Wishing Xander was back in school. Right. So how's he doing? He's doing pretty good. They just had a little parade for them. Um, I think it was yesterday. Oh, really? It was cool, okay. yeah. Okay. Well, he seemed to be doing well when I brought around the mints and stuff for the kids. So uh, he seemed to be doing all right. But, yeah, I, after a while, it's kind of like, yeah. boy, that closeness is getting to you, huh? Yes, because we are definitely not six feet apart. I wish we were. <laughs> He's probably thinking, man, I'd get closer if I could all the time. I know how little brothers are. I know how they are. I mean, you're getting a whole lot of people saying congratulations, and they can't believe that you're growing up and, and a poor, that our little miracle is growing up. And so, <laughs> hey, folks, I tell you, I thought the same thing. As soon as you walked in, I thought, oh, my gosh. I re I've been around long enough now. I remember when you were a little little girl running around here. And now look at you, almost a grown woman. And so we're we're really proud of you and excited. So uh, summer's here, okay. And as as everyone knows, uh, and we let you know, Falls Creek isn't happening. Uh, how 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 is that changing your your outlook on summer? Well, um, I was looking forward to Falls Creek, but of course, this pandemic was going to change some things. Right. Um, I was. I'm hoping that this all blows over before summer ends, at least, to where right. we get to enjoy some of it. So. Right. Well, and and as I shared with you, and I share with others, John is going to be having an announcement this week about some of the things that, that we're going to go ahead and we we've got something special planned. For our, for our youth group, uh, a little retreat. And so John's going to be bringing that up. So we will get to do some of that. So uh, we, we're, we're going to try to give you a little bit of some some of that that you are going to be missing. All right, so summer is, is really officially now on for you, right? Yes. What do you normally do during the summer that might be different now, other than Falls Creek? Um, well, we usually, me and Xander, usually go visit our grandmother a lot in Apache. Um well, now it's going to be different because, you know, she's older and she's more prone to getting it. So uh -huh. we don't want to, like, contaminate anything at her house or get right. her sick or anything, especially since she just got done with cancer. Right. Oh, so. yeah. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Anna Navas is, wrote here, says, congratulations that you were in her first grade Sunday school class. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, we're all feeling a little bit older here today, aren't we? So what, what a great time. So... 
What's going to happen for you after summer? What, what are your what are your plans? Um, well, depending on if this pandemic blows over, I want to go to Votech for mm -hmm. culinary arts. Oh, all right. Well, culinary arts, huh? Yes. So you, you enjoy that? I do. That's great. So how long does that usually take you? What? How long is that course, do you know? Um, I believe it's three years. Three years. Yes. Okay. Wow. Well, I tell you what, we'll, we'll offer you here. We'll give you an, a free internship. You don't get paid for it, but uh, <laughs> we'll let you come and practice for us as much as you want to practice, all right? <laughs> so what do you want to do with that? After you, with culinary art, what um, do you want to do? Well, I've, I've had a couple of ideas that I've wanted to do. Um, I've either wanted to have, like, my own, like, cafe oh. or my own catering business. Oh, there you go. There you go. Well, I mean, good luck with that. I, 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 this is the first I've heard of all this. So all this time that we've been together, this is the first I've heard <laughs> that you enjoy that. Well, that's awesome. And I'm telling you, that's one of those businesses that usually – doesn't go away. People are always wanting to eat. Amen. So, well, good. Well, I just want you to know we're really proud of you, and it's been an honor to watch you grow up, and and uh, looking forward to staying connected with you. We want you to stay a part of our church and stay a part of our church family, and we want to uh, just help you in any way that we can. Before we go, though, we do have uh, a little video. So, John has put together. Pardon. Oh, okay. Yeah, John wants to do the gift first. All right. So we do have a gift, okay? What we want to do is we want to give you this, and uh, we want to thank you for being a part of our youth group. Uh, you were a faithful member all the way through from the time you were able to get in. You were in our children's <laughs> department, then our youth group. Uh, we just want to give you a little something let you know we are super proud of you, and we're honored to get to be a part of your life. So real quick, though, we do want to watch a, a little video. So if you'll just look there, you, you'll be able to watch it with us. So, John, let's go ahead and roll our video. Since some of those pictures that I told you while that was going on, that's how I remember you, <laughs> being that little girl running around here. And now look at you. Man, we're so proud of you, and we're honored to, again, get to be a part of your life. Thank well, you. before we before we let you go, uh, I always like to take a moment, and if it's all right with you, can I pray over you real quick? Of course. Okay, let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you, and we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. And God, thank you for your watch care and, and how you provide for us. And and God, I, I just lift up Miracle to you now. I, I thank you for her. I thank you for uh, letting me get to be a part of her life as her pastor and and uh, all the experiences we've had with camps and uh, Bible schools and different things here, even at the church. And God, just being able to see her grow. And I thank you for that privilege that I've had. And I thank you for her family, uh, Lord, that has enc have encouraged her to, to stay a part of this church and all the things, Lord, that... Uh, that she's been doing through it. I thank you for her being a part of our youth group the last several years. And God, how I know that you've worked in her life. And now, Lord, as she gets ready to step into a, a new stage, I ask God for blessings for her. I ask that you give her encouragement and show favor on her. And Lord, as uh, in the fall, as she starts uh, at Votech, I pray that you would continue to open those doors for her. That God, she would be able to uh, to learn and to grow and to not just the, 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 the cooking part, but Lord, even the business aspect of it. The Lord, that she could honor you in all of her life and all that she, she does from this point on. 
And God, I pray that you would continue to draw her closer to you. And I pray for her family, to God, that they would continue to support her, to love her, and to guide her in, in all the ways. And that, Lord, that she could keep her focus on you most of all. But God, again, I thank you for her. I thank you uh, just for letting her be the, the young woman that she is and continue to work in her life. And Father, we love you and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Miracle, thank you so much for coming and being being a part of our program tonight. And man, you've got a lot of people praying for you, wishing you well, and congratulating you. And, and I hope that you'll go back and watch this because you'll be able to see all the comments because you've been getting a lot of them. That's what <laughs> people, people think the world of you. And we're honored to get to be a part of your life. So, but again, thank you for coming and being a part of this program. Well, that'll wrap that part up. But what I want to do now is step into our time of Bible study and prayer. So uh, just stick around with us and uh, we hope you enjoy the Bible study tonight. Well, hi, everybody. I hope that you're enjoying the, the program tonight. And I just want to take a moment to share a verse of scripture with you and a quick thought. Last week, I shared with you the idea about Samson and uh, how he was able to do the, the powerful things that he did. And it wasn't because of his physical stature. It was because and due to the Spirit of God working through him. And tonight, what I want to do is I want to talk about we as Christians, how we can enhance uh, that spirit. The verse that I want to read is found in 2 Peter chapter 1. And it's in verses 2 and 3. And it says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of the Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. So we see here that it's the same thing as it's by the Spirit of God that we're able to do things and, and the direction that he gives us. And, and, and Peter writes here is by his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So in our lives, how we're able to move forward and to grow in him is that he gives us the knowledge. Now, there's two types of knowledge in the Greek that, that refer to this type here in, in the scripture. And the one is, is the idea of gnosis. That is learning by study. That's just getting a a head knowledge. That's by learning facts about God or learning facts about anything as a matter of fact. Just getting to really not experience them just to maybe sit in a room and just learn facts. That's not the knowledge that he's talking about here. It's just not knowing facts about God. What he's talking about is this epignosis, and that's, that's the, the knowledge by observation. In other words, it's, it's an experiential knowledge. It's experiencing them, and by that, getting to understand, getting to know them in a better way. One of the greatest ideas that we have with this is with the husband and wife. The husband and wife know each other, and over years they've spent time experiencing a life together, and through that, they get to know the likes and dislikes of the other one. They don't have to always ask, what do you like, what do you not like? It's as a matter of fact, they already know what one likes and what one doesn't like. They even know what buttons to push because they know them uh, so well. And this is, we gain that same way with God, is that we learn to know God in a, in a, in a personal way. And the way we do that is by spending time with him. As a husband and wife spend more time together, the more time they spend together, the more they know each other, the longer they have experience in, and the more experiences they have together, the better they know each other. And it's, it even raises them to a different level, a different level of love, a different level of understanding. And so when a husband and wife has spent years together, man, they know each other so well. And this is the same way that Paul uh, or Peter is telling us here to learn about God through a daily time and a personal time. I've shared with you in all the years that I've been pastoring here about a personal time with God, a daily quiet time so that you can experience God, not just learn facts about him. I don't want you just to read the Bible. I want you to experience the Bible. And so by spending time with God, you'll get to know him. And then to understand the second thing is this is the key to our spiritual growth. I can learn all these facts and still stay a babe in Christ. But it's when I grow in him, I experience him, I spend time with him, my spiritual growth is, is, is there and it's obvious that I'm not the same Christian that I was when I first became saved. 
I hope and I pray that I'm not even the same pastor I am now than I was 20 years ago when I preached my first sermon. And all of this has come about by experience and understanding about God. So I want to encourage you to spend time with God starting right now. Make a commitment not just to read for facts, but to be in a relationship with Him, to experience Him in a great way. And by this, God can reveal Himself to you more and more and more. And as you know Him, you'll love Him. And you'll love Him at a different level. And I hope that you have enjoyed this time together. And I, I know you look forward to the rest of our program. And I uh, hope you'll enjoy it. But let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for revealing yourself to us in such a great way. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word, for the fellowship that we get to have with you. And I pray, Father, for anyone tonight that doesn't know you as their Savior, Lord, that they would come to the understanding of that. Father, guide us through the rest of this program and continue to bless our church. In Jesus' name, amen. Now enjoy the rest of the program. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back. And uh, there we go. Welcome back, and thank you for uh, sticking with us, and we hope you enjoyed uh, that just a few moments of Bible study. As you can see now, we're joined by Ed and Gene Peterson, and we're honored to have them to be a part of our show, and we're very excited about this time. And so how, how are y'all doing? We're still married. Still married. <laughs> <laughs> You're still married, huh? Ed, how about you? We're sheltering in place. You're sheltering in place. <laughs> have, you, have you been able to understand why the, the statistics on spousal problems have, have blossomed and bloomed from this point? You're finding that out, huh? <laughs> and well, Gene, look to... at me. Look at me, Gene. There you go. <laughs> so go ahead, Ed. I'm well, I still go to work in the mornings. Oh, okay. And come home around noontime. And so I've got a little bit of time away to give Gene some time by herself. <laughs> And you know she needs that time, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, so, well, good. So how has this affected your life in, in your daily routines? Well, things are different, uh, sure. obviously. Um, we're together a lot more, and we're actually talking a lot more, and we do some, uh, we walk around the neighborhood. Uh, okay. So, but it's different, but it's good. Good. Jean, what about you? I've cooked more in the last two months than I have the last two years. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> and good, good menus. I'm eating everything that she cooks. There you well, go. he's there. I mean, you know, so much of the time I'm normally gone at least once a day or once a week or twice a week, sometimes to Oklahoma City. And so I can make a meal and then the leftovers, you know, are there a week later. And, right. But with him coming home for lunch and uh, not going out to lunch, he does, um, the food gets eaten. So... So you have to cook again, and, right? Well, yeah, but you know, it's kind of, kind of nice. So. Yeah, there you go. So, so now you might actually see what retirement might be like. Yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> a little bit scary. <laughs> you know, I've been hearing a lot of people say just that, that this, this retirement, I'm getting a picture of it. I'm not so sure that's what we're going to want it to. But anyway, <laughs> so uh, you guys are really, usually, as you talked about, really involved in a lot of different things. Uh, I know, Ed, you're on boards and things, different things, Gene, you're involved with the Resource Center, and Ed, you are too. How has that changed for y'all, uh, the things that you've been involved in? Well, so many things are in Zoom now. As a matter of fact, uh, when John did his uh, presentation to us, uh, I think it was the 17th of March, uh -huh. 65 days ago, that's the first time I've been exposed to Zoom. And now I'm in 16 different Zoom groups, oh my. and I've had 36 different Zoom meetings. And wow. I have one tomorrow that's going to be three hours long that's an open meeting under the State Law Act where we have to stay on camera so we keep a quorum to keep it a legal uh, open meeting. Oh, I, I was about to say three hours. That means you could hit mute and hit off camera and get up and walk away for a little bit, but I guess you can't now. Well, you have to be sure that you keep the quorum by people leaving. So does everybody have to raise their hand, I'm next to leave, or no, you can't? <laughs> I'm not sure how they're going to do that. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, so th how has that affected you with the things that you're involved in? Uh, just staying at home and just more, you know, I'm not on Zoom. But you're in the Sunday school class now. But that's been one of the neat things. Is okay, that, you know, Because yeah. normally I'm at the Welcome Center. I'm in the Sunday school class. I, you know, I wish I'd written down when I'd started doing the Welcome Center, but I want to say it's probably been close to 10 years. Yeah. And um, 
it's really neat to be back in the Sunday school class. Oh, and, I bet. Yeah. Uh, you know, just to hear different people talk about the lesson and and hear and David King teaches some Sundays. Okay. And, uh, so that part has been really for me has been rich. Right. And and she's added an awful lot to it. I mean, this is our Bible scholar. Yeah, well, absolutely. I Carol Lemming is the Bible scholar, but <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, so there's a kind of a little bit of a conflict of you know I, of giving I don't want to leave that so as long as they do Zoom I can stay you know connected to Sunday school right and then a couple of people that I don't normally like Lisa uh, Nonick has been on and a couple of people like that that I have never been in a Sunday school class with and to you know see them on a weekly basis has been kind of neat. So. Well, good, good. So the, some of the changes have not been bad. Yeah, yeah good, no, good. Right. Well, one thing that I've always wanted to ask uh, you guys, uh, Ed, you retired from the Air Force. Yes. And you guys have traveled the world. What caused Lawton to be the place you, you two decided to settle? Well, I was offered a job with the firm, and they gave me a couple locations to um, exercise that option. Uh -huh. And one of them was Lawton, Oklahoma. And... Gene's mother living up in, and father at the time living up in Oklahoma City. That was a, a good location, close right. enough and not too close. Uh, <laughs> so that was an easy selection. Okay. And we just really enjoyed Lawton because our boys were able to grow up here, attend, attend school here through high school. And uh, so this is our home. So how long have you been in Lawton? 31 31 years. years. Actually, okay. this fall, this August, I think it's 32. But I have to say that when I moved here, you know, I never lived, I lived three years in Guam and three years in Shreveport, longest I'd ever lived anywhere in my whole life. So in my mind, I thought we were coming here to three to six, <laughs> five, seven, eight years. And then we were moving to Colorado because that's where we were going to retire was right. in Colorado. Right, right. So you had three to six. You just put the three and the six together. That's what it was. I keep waiting for that move to Colorado. It never happens. <laughs> so, so, so you're, well, how long have you actually been members of First Baptist West? We joined here in the fall of 98. Okay. We went, uh, the first 10 years we lived in Lawton, we were at Cash Road Baptist. Uh -huh. and, uh, and then our, our, both of our sons, they're five years apart, but they both ended up coming over here and being involved in a youth group. Okay. And so we had done things, you know, as participants and, you know, supporting them here at First Baptist West. And so when our second son said he wanted to come here to uh, the youth group, we said, okay, we're going to make, right. make the change. And so we came over here, and then he was here for a while, and then he went down to First Baptist. <laughs> so, okay. Well, praise so, the Lord, you didn't follow So him. I said, go. no, we're not, we're not going down there. So we Good. stayed here. and. And have loved it ever since. Okay. Well, you guys have been great influences on people here. As a matter of fact, Caitlin just oh. lets us know she's watching. So <laughs> I know you've been very influential in her life and the things that, that's gone on and uh, her coming to know Christ mm -hmm. and growing. And, and so uh, uh, now you've been teaching Sunday school for how long, Ed? Well, I've been teaching since Guam. Oh, really? Okay. So it's uh, really been pretty continuous at all the churches that we've been involved with. Mm-hmm. So when you moved over here, did you pretty much start in? How long did it take you it, to it get involved? It was about six months, I think, uh, before. There was no downtime then, huh? Not really, but okay. it's been good. Good, good. I, but so, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. I probably have redone a few lessons a few times. <laughs> well, I always say the pastors have about five years worth of sermons that they start recycling. Well, I, I tell you, I, I'm almost at going around them twice then. Here, so <laughs> I, I hope y'all haven't caught on to that yet, but... I'm no. checking my notes. No. Yeah, there you go. Well, you know, one of the things that I always see, always hear, because you've always got certain people who will write down, you know, when the preacher preaches a message and go, June 30th, 19, whatever. And then, of course, you, you come back and sometime, you know, you preach, and maybe not even the same sermon, but you use a text again. I've had people that come up and say, preacher, you know, you preached that back in five <laughs> years ago. I said, what was my point? What were my points? I don't know. I just wrote the date. I said, check. You might not have had the same points, but so yeah, th there you go. That happens. So if they rotate, I always, you know, one thing too, is I always think about people are kind of like looking down on a preacher. Well, you preach that sermon. And now I'm thinking, wait a minute. A music guy will sing the song three times in 
in a six month period and he didn't even write those songs. <laughs> so why are we so down on the preacher? You know, I'm just kidding. That's I a feel like joke. if we hear it the second time, then we needed to hear it the second that's, time. That's right. Well, I got a long story that I could tell about that, but I won't, I won't do that. We're here for you, not for me. So I get enough time. So you, you talk about your Sunday school. Now, of course, Sunday school has changed drastically over the last nine weeks. What have you seen some of the advantages other than your wife getting to be in class? What are some other positive things you've seen, Ed? Well, we've seen some other people come to, that have been in the class but have not been coming. Uh, they're now able to come uh, okay. easier. Right. Uh, a couple of people that had uh, a sick member that it's easier now to, right. to do that. Um, we miss the personal contact, though, obviously. Sure. Um, the There's some talking over each other, but that's... Uh, not been a problem really. Okay. Um, we, uh, my format is that uh, we we try to encourage discussion uh, of the points that are being made, right. rather than, than a strict lecture. So. Right. And uh, as Gene mentioned, David King teaches one week and uh, of the month, and oftentimes if I can't be there, he'll teach more than one week. And yeah. We have different styles, but I think that's good for the class. How, how, does the, how have your classes responded to the structure that you're talking about? You're not lecturing so much and you talk over each other. How have they adjusted to that? Well, I think that's what we were doing beforehand, so it's just a, oh, just rolled right into it. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Uh, just now they're all staring at each other at one time on the and screen. And I would say, too, that with the age group that we are, uh, none of us really are crazy about embracing technology. And so, again, right. sometimes it's a little frustrating and I you know one Sunday morning I said I want to get back when I can when I'm angry I can actually put my hands on somebody's neck and choke them you know this is just you know, I need a virtual whatever that's but me guess, that she wants to choke that's what I'm saying. <laughs> all you need to do is turn around he's right there Jean. Uh, no, I wasn't yet. well actually I'm in one room and she's in another room oh so we yeah. there you go Smart man. No. Smart man. <laughs> that, way, that way you can mute her without her knowing. Oh, I guess that little microphone pops up yeah, it down in the corner yes. so she knows you yeah. muted her. So, so you, you're talking about getting settled in, getting used to it. Uh, what are some of the struggles you seem to have had with it? Well, initially the technical stuff. We probably would be spending five, ten minutes at the start of each hour uh, right. trying to make sure that people could get on and, uh, and keep saying, and helping them find out where the buttons were and some people getting on their phone and calling somebody else in the class to try to help them. <laughs> so right. uh, what, I think we got pretty much through that now. Okay, good. So the technical aspects of it. And I think that people, if they're not doing a lot of Zooming, uh, even once a week is, can be challenging. Right, absolutely. Just like the fact that we got streaming as a different format, and we got this tonight as yet a different format. So we got three different formats right. of technology. Uh, right for people to be challenged by yeah and, and it is difficult because certain things you can't do with the other technology exactly. so you you almost have to like here we, we like to be able to get the response mm -hmm. and, and feedback well if you go to another then of course you you don't have that right and right. so yeah you have to kind of pick and choose and but like I said unfortunately there's two or three different ver varieties of, of Absolutely. Of live streaming yeah. stuff. So, yeah, it's all different. So uh, is, there, is there something that you see that we're doing through that that you say, you know what, now that we're doing it, this may be something we try to keep doing some, even when we can meet back? Well, I think that's going to be across the board in, in every aspect of life. People are finding that they can do this. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, some people that I'm in one of the groups with said that they have a family Zoom time that they okay. had before this all happened. And which is a great idea if you've got right. kids scattered around the world, uh, certainly across the country, that you could set up a time that you all get together. So I think there's going to be some things that people continue with meetings right. that if you had to, well, as an example, I've got several that I go to Oklahoma City for that are, certainly could be done by Zoom and delay, uh, d not delay, completely cancel out the travel and the cost of that. Right, right. Now, not so much with the church, but... Uh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, and, and one of the things that, that we did even when we started the live streaming of our worship services prior to, to all of this, one of the things that, that, that I really enjoyed was like on Monday morning or whatever that maybe one of our senior adults who weren't, hadn't been feeling well, they'd come in on Monday and say, thank you. But I had a cough. I wasn't able to get up and get, but we were able to join in. And we even had families who loved ones were really 
ill at that time were going through some times and it, they would contact me and say it was really special for us to sit there together and knowing there wasn't any way that we could get into church but then to be able to be a part of that. So there's really been some good things that I think God is being able to do through our, oh, yeah. this media that we medium that we've never we didn't really explore that much. I think with the Sunday school classes though and until we can get back together uh, we're just kind of isolated by our Sunday school classes. Yes. And so it's the rest of the church that you really want to interface with. Well, oh, absolutely. I mean, just like even tonight, having you here, I mean, we could have easily done this on Zoom, like no, we had we to do have. some. No, we could have been on Zoom. <laughs> okay, not easily. John would, <laughs> have had to, with this. Yeah, John would have had to drive all the way over to their house and get them set up and then drive back over here and get me going. Yeah, because mm. basically John would have had three people mm -hmm. that have no idea what we're doing. And he's <laughs> trying to get us all going at the same time. So God has really been moving, though. I mean, he, he being able to connect to the church, stay connected with all the different mediums that we're using now has been beneficial. What are, what are some things that you sense God is showing you through this, that he's something you've learned through this whole nine week and extended on through the summer? What are some things that you have learned through this? Go ahead. Well, I thought of the verse that says, um, and I thought, you know, you have to be really careful about Scripture. You're not supposed to change it, but I am going to take a license here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you heard she said, not me. Okay. Well, Psalm says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So I'm changing it and saying, I'm going to be super excited when I get to go. <laughs> Absolutely. They say, come on into the house of the Lord. Yeah. So I think that, um, you know, one of the things, there was a thing that came on Facebook early on, and I took a screenshot of it, you know, five things to do every day. And one of them was to be grateful. And so um, to make that a conscious thing to do and so one of the things I did was what what and you ask people what they're most grateful for and they'll most always say friends and family right and so um I made up my little bar I have enough stationery and napkins I could open my own store <laughs> but so I got my stationery box done and so I've written notes to people that I'm grateful to have in my life and right. different as the Lord would lead me to think of them and write to them so um, I think to be conscious of being grateful. And the other thing is to get up and get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, I thought, you know, uh, again, going to the scripture in Ephesians, it says, put on the armor of God. And I thought, except on days when you're not going out. Why would you need the armor when you're not even going to see anybody? Yeah. You need it every Amen. day, every situation. So to get up and have the routine of getting up and getting dressed and eating breakfast or drinking coffee or whatever, the same routine. And the same as Bible study and being in God's Word and praying. And, right. And even though you're not out in the world uh, or maybe even interacting with people that much, but to put on that armor of God and, and wear it even around the house. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons that I've always felt like you need to put that armor of God on, even if you're not going out, is sometimes I have to protect me from me mm -hmm. and so line. yeah so those things come back to me and so sometimes I'm my own worst enemy mm -hmm. and so the armor of God is necessary like you said whether I'm going out into a crowd whether I'm standing up to preach or whether I'm just staying at my mm -hmm. home by myself I still need that armor because I can get me sometimes yeah. I can trip myself up yeah and my our minds can go down trails that you don't think they would go, you don't, know, yeah. and, yeah. and, you know, being by yourself sometimes, and, I mean, everything from depression or anxiety or, you know, I would, sometimes I'd wake up at four or five o'clock in the morning thinking, I'm going to go to Sam's today. No, I'm going to go tomorrow. No, I'm going to go tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll go tomorrow. And I get, and I just start, and I think, I'm just going to have to go now, you know, yeah. just get over it. And I thought, is that not just crazy that you get so anxious over something like mm -hmm. that? But it's because of, and again, limiting how much you listen to on TV, the news, and, you know, right. all the whatever, whatever. So, again, limiting, you know, no more than 30 minutes of news a day. Yeah. And uh, so I thought, that's that's not very smart. So <laughs> just breathe. Right. There you go. There you so. go. Yeah. Ed, I kind of get an idea of how my wife 
feels about me sometimes. She says, I just get exhausted being around you. <laughs> do, do you feel that sometimes? Yes. <laughs> That's why it's good that he and I are married and you and Martha yeah, are married. Yeah. Because he married a Jean and he married a... <laughs> well, whatever, uh, everybody went crazy. You yeah. know, Larry Burkett years ago said that uh, <coughs> we're yoked to somebody who's different than we are. Right. Absolutely. And if we were both the same, one of us would be unnecessary. Absolutely. And I think I know which one it would be in my case. <laughs> well, I did want to share. Okay, sure. One of the things that, okay. not, that the Lord necessarily showed me. Sure. But something I learned in all this is that there is someone who is as particular about their hair as I am. Yeah. And that would be you. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was so ready when they opened up. I, I was needing it so badly. <laughs> but not just anybody no, will no, be allowed no, no, to touch and cut no. your hair. Oh, I had several people that were offering. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Everybody, as a matter of fact, anyone I saw was saying, let us just clip the wings. That's all they wanted to do was clip my wings. I said, do you know what I ought to turn it into? It's called a mullet. <laughs> I didn't even have a mullet. When mullets were cool, I wouldn't wear a mullet. So, yes. And, and you and I got into the re reminiscing over bad haircuts and who had the worst bad haircut and yes. I finally pulled the card and said bad haircut when I was pregnant and you couldn't beat that I one. I couldn't beat that one. No, I, <laughs> and I wouldn't even try. I wouldn't even try. So what about you before we wrap up? What are some things that you've sensed that God's been trying to show you through this time? Well, how important relationships are. Uh, and it, some people can be uh, somewhat isolating, mm -hmm. but I think that even this forced isolation has made you appreciate relationships face-to-face -face right. relationships yes and I think as uh, I'm, we're in the age group that uh, probably we're going to be somewhat reluctant to come back to uh, the social undistancing mm -hmm. but at the same time really looking forward to getting back to the face-to-face -face contact and relationships an opportunity to share uh, Christ even. Amen. Well, good, good. Well, listen, I know we're running out of time, but I just wanted to thank you guys for coming and uh, sitting with me tonight and, and visiting with and showing everybody what God's doing in your life. And, and it's an honor to be, uh, be your pastor, be your friend. You guys are a great influence on me and great encouragement. And y'all don't know what that means to a pastor, to have people like you that support the ministry and support what I do. And you, you both seem, you know, even when we did the Zoom and stuff, it wasn't easy, but you guys are really good to say, okay, we'll try it. And even some of the things that, that we have to do, like like I told you when we were off camera, is I've never done this before. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. And so, I, but it means a lot to know You're that- You're doing a good job. Well, thank you. And that means a lot to know that whatever, you, you guys are allowing us to, allowing me and our staff to, to try it. And our staff, oh my goodness. Oh, absolutely. Have, on Sunday mornings, I see you know people that are there leading the worship and right. and behind the scenes and um, I'm grateful and thankful for oh, every single one of we them. We are blessed. That's why I even said Sunday morning, I want to take a moment and acknowledge the people who are putting oh, this service. Mm -hmm. Because if it looks like it's going smoothly, it's because They've done a great job because well, sometimes I see John up at playing drums. Is that true? Oh, John Sunday man, he rocked the house. Well, Sunday man, well, how does that happen? I mean, that he <laughs> could be two places. Well, you yeah. have a computer back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, what what you should have done, and I because I was as I was preaching and doing stuff, John was still uh, before he'd gotten in the back. I was what commit, commenting to uh, Randy because Randy was back there running at what doing what John helped him, and man, I'd see Randy. Back and forth, man. He was moving. So, yeah, it is. It's a difficult job, and we've got a great group of people. God put the people in place. That's another testament that He knew before what we were going to have to be doing at First Baptist West, and He put the right people in place so that we could continue to minister. You keep hearing people say that none of this has surprised God. Absolutely, and, and He's and, and totally you, in control. And sometimes you have to look back and go, "I see why He." Well, and you think about our church started live streaming before yes. all this happened so that was already in place right and already kind of worked through those yeah we'd worked out a few of the bugs and, and, bugs yeah. and whatever and, and I think God how God prepared us yeah in many ways so. well he's been amazing and uh, you guys are amazing and I, again y'all mean the world to me and I thank you so much for being a part of our church and glad God brought you and kept you here and a lot more than the 
three to six years you had planned on. So uh, that had turned into 36 instead of three to six. So, uh, but do you mind if I take a moment and pray over you before no, we, we before we close out? All right, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for the blessings you've given us. And God, I, I do thank you for Ed and Jean, and I thank you for what they mean to me, what they mean to our church, and Lord, what I know they mean to you. And I, I thank you for their support. I thank you for their faithfulness to First Baptist West. And Lord, for the ministry that you've placed them in. And I know, Lord, that they have been a big influence on so many different people. And I pray that you'd continue to show favor on them and give them encouragement in these difficult times. And God, continue <clears throat> to give them health, to, both physically and spiritually. And God, let them keep their faith and focus on you. And then, Lord, I pray that you'd bless their, their families. Lord, I just pray for protection for all of them. And that, God, as they continue to minister through, through, through our church, through their Sunday school, through their positions in, in, uh, on boards and other places, Lord, they would continue to be that Christian influence that I know the world needs to see. So, God, again, thank you for them. Grant them peace and strength and favor. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 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 Well, before we wrap up the program tonight, we have one more little segment that we want to show you, and it's uh, it's uh, to bring about for the weekend our family kite day. So we want you to watch one more thing, and then, then we'll come back and close out. So John, if you would, go ahead and, and play that. Hi, this is Pastor Harold, and I'm just out trying to enhance my kite flying skills, all in preparation for the First Baptist West Family Kite Day that we have every year on the 24th. But uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do that together as we did the last couple of years being out here and flying our kites and having a good time. So what I want to encourage you to do is on the 23rd and 24th, that Memorial Day weekend, if you and your family would go around and, and if y'all just join together flying some kites and having a great time. And then what I ask you to do is if you would post that uh, for us so that we can all celebrate together that Family Kite Day. Uh, we are going to be trying to get around and hand uh, some kites to our kids, and they're going to be blank. And we want you to uh, fix your kite up any way you want, and then take pictures of it, and then show those also to us so that we can all just join in together and have a great time. It's going to be a great weekend, and we're really looking forward to the 31st, where we can all actually get together again and have worship together. So have a great weekend. Look forward to seeing you, and go fly a kite. God bless you. So we hope that you'll join in with us and just enjoy some family time. That's really what we're trying to do is just encourage you to slow down, spend some family time together, and, and just let us celebrate together with that. So also be looking out. Carrie and I will be starting tomorrow. We hope that we'll see some of you as we hand out these kites. And, and Carrie's got some gift bags and different things for, for the kids. And so uh, we're looking forward to the next couple of days getting around and uh, just getting to see some of you. But we want to thank you for joining in tonight and thank uh, Miracle and Gene and Ed for giving their time for John, Kerry, and everybody else that, that worked so hard to, to, to put this together. And I get the easy work. They, they have to do all the hard stuff. But we've had a great night. And I want to encourage you to join us again on our live stream service at 1045 this Sunday as we celebrate Memorial Day and we celebrate those who have given so much. Uh, for our freedom. And so join us then and let people know about us and, and share, share us on, on Facebook, on YouTube, different places, and let people know that, that we're ministering for Jesus Christ. And I just again want to say thank you. It's been an honor, it's being an honor to serve as your pastor, and we look forward to what God is going to do. So have a great evening and God bless you. <laughs>